My name is uh, Frank Stelly, and um, I'm presenting work today that uh, was worked on with my co-author, Mark Sharvari, who's in the audience. And today we're going to talk about why students do not turn on their video cameras during online classes. And I'm going to present an equitable and inclusive plan to encourage them to do so. And then some follow-up information on how that plan has worked for us. So first to describe our course. Our course is an introductory biology laboratory course. It's an inquiry-based course. And the normal structure of the course when we were in uh, the before times was one 50 minute lecture per week and one three hour lab section per week. And the data I'll be presenting today will be mostly from the spring 2020 semester during which we had the emergency transition to uh, remote teaching. During that semester, we had 312 students roughly, and we have 12 graduate student laboratory instructors, each teaching two sections, so 24 sections. And we, uh, most of those sections have an undergraduate teaching assistant, and the section sizes are capped at 18 students. So these are the sizes and the description of the classes that I'll be presenting data from. When we, before I show that graph, when we first made this transition, we were nervous. We did not know what would be reasonable to expect of the students. They were given two weeks to leave campus, go home, reestablish themselves. And we weren't even sure if it was um, reasonable to think that they could synchronously remotely connect to lab section. And so we polled our students and found out the vast majority of them had access to webcam and an internet access, uh, you know, a reliable internet connection. And the very few that did not, we arranged um, them to access university resources and made alternatives. So we recorded class sessions and students who were in, uh, in conducive time zones were offered to switch sections. So we, we went out of our way to try to make the transition as best we could. We decided also to make the lecture pre-recorded and that the, la uh, the lab sections would be synchronous remote sessions via Zoom happening live. This graph is to show how we did that semester during the remote transition. So students anonymously at the end of the semester and student evaluations said that we did a moderately good job. And you can see that uh, many students though we did an extremely good job. And so the students were happy with how the class went. When we switched to remote teaching, we were hoping that when we connected to class, we would see all of our students bright and smiling with their cameras on. And what we were learning from our prep meeting was that la many laboratory instructors were reporting that in actuality, what they were seeing were a lot of black boxes, uh, sometimes with not even clear names on display or no thumbnail images. And it was somewhat frustrating for uh, several of these instructors. And so I thought, well, how can we encourage camera use? The first thing we need to do is understand really like why students are not turning on their camera. But before I get into that, I want to discuss the benefits of camera use. Why care about this at all? Why should we even care about encouraging camera use? Well, I reviewed the literature and found that, you know, the most obvious benefit is nonverbal communication. So an instructor can get feedback. They can see uh, student faces that can help them adjust the pace of their teaching. They can see, um, sorry, I had a glitch there. Let me know if you lose visual. They can see uh, smiles and frowns. You can tell when your students are bored. Okay, it's time to move on. You could see looks of confusion. This is more, perhaps the most obvious benefit. We also have students interacting with each other in group. We have some group work. They work on projects together. They're in uh, active learning discussion groups where they talk with each other. And literature shows that student-student interactions also benefit from being able to see each other's faces. Other research shows that there is higher instructor satisfaction when they can see their students' faces and that otherwise the instructor may feel like they're talking into a void. Now. It is not a uh, student center approach just to simply care about what the feelings of the instructor are. However, 
there's evidence that shows that if a if a instructor is doing a poor job, which they may do if they're not satisfied and they're talking into a void and they're thrown off their game, and they're doing a poor job, doing a poor job has been cited by students as a very uh, important reason as to whether or not a student sticks with the major. So it can still have negative consequences for the student. So it's not simply a uh, um, an instructor-centered approach, it is a student-centered approach to consider how well uh, an instructor will perform. Another category of benefits is that it helps build relationships in the classroom. So instructor-student relationships were reported as being warmer, closer, and more comfortable when instructors could see students' faces. And then in student-student groups, students reported that it builds trust and rapport when working with other students when they can see each other's faces. In a time of pandemic, um, in a time of a pandemic, there's some social isolation due to social distancing policies and being home. And what seems to be relevant regarding this is that there's studies from nursing homes that show that being able to remotely connect with others can help fend off loneliness. And so there's another whole category of uh, affective benefits of camera use. So despite all these benefits, we were still not thinking, we were still thinking it was not good to require cameras to be on. And sure enough, when you review the literature, having cameras on may add stress to an already stressful situation of the pandemic. One study found that COVID-19 increased college student anxiety and depression. Another national study that looked at measures of psychological distress of US adults found that 4% of adults in 2018 went up to 14% in April 2020 during the pandemic. And these negative effects may be worse for some of our students, some students than others. In that same national study, young adults went up even more in stress. And most of our students in, in our demographics are young adults. Um, also, those with household incomes less than 35,000 a year went up more, and Hispanic adults went up more. And the point of this is that certain subsets of your students may have uh, disproportionately negative effects from requiring camera use and going through stress at this time. So I have uh, a link I'm putting in the chat right now. I would like to hear from the audience about why you think students do not turn on their cameras. So the first thing we did was we brainstormed why might students not turn on their cameras? And then we use that to create an a priori list to ask them in a survey. But first, I'd like to see how this group thinks. I'm attempting to share the results screen, but I'm having a technical glitch that I've never seen before. Well, I've given this talk several times before, so I know common responses. And uh, unfortunately, the screen in which I could click to reveal what everyone else is saying is completely pixelated and I cannot see it. There are many responses in the chat. If you, uh, I didn't click the button. Okay, I see, there's a chat, okay. Yes, Zoom fatigue, bandwidth issues, possibly what I'm facing right now, although I'm alone here. Fear of appearance, fear of being judged, poor Wi-Fi. Having a snack, fear of being called on. Living situation, family distractions. Not every student has a nice room. Excellent, you're touching on all the things I am. Uh... Great. And so this is the list that we came up with. And so, so some of you are, are uh, potentially connecting on the phone. I'm gonna read these. So we, students were given in an anonymous survey, this list, and they could check as many reasons as they want. 
not applicable. I always had my camera on. I felt like everyone was looking at me the whole time. I was concerned about my appearance. I was concerned about other people being seen behind me. I was concerned about my physical location seen behind me. I was concerned about distracting my lab instructor. I was concerned about distracting my classmates. My internet connection was weak. My webcam was not working. I did not want to be seen walking away from my computer. I did not want to be seen doing other things on my computer. I did not want to be seen uh, not paying attention. And so I'm sure that uh, many of you came up with these. And uh, the next poll was to um, ask you which one you think was the most popular. And since I am not able to see the poll everywhere screen to activate the second question, I'm just gonna ask you to do this by thought. Um, you, can, you can also enter it if the chat, which one you think was the most common among our students. And I'll stop after I see the first 10 or so responses in the chat. And we have about two more minutes. Okay, thank you. Appearance, physical location. Well, it turned out that I was concerned about my appearance was the most popular uh, response given. And as you can see, the uh, things that many instructors may be nervous about, like the cynical reasons, like I'm not paying attention or I'm walking away from the computer, were actually low on the list. Um, and student, this was anonymous. I was concerned about other people being seen behind me. My internet connection was weak. I felt like everyone was looking at me the whole time. I was concerned about my physical location. These were higher on the list. Students could also write in their own answer. Um, but first I wanna say that when you analyze the breakdown between underrepresented minorities in STEM as defined by the NSF, we found that URM students were more likely to say they were concerned about people being seen behind them, their internet connection being weak, and they were concerned about their physical location. And so this right here shows you that forcing cameras to be on can have a disproportionate negative effect towards underrepresented minorities in the classroom. And so we were justified in not requiring it. And we suggest that you also do not require it. Um, another thing that we learned is that it, the other reasons given, the most popular reason given was some form of it was the norm. No one else had it on, so I shut mine off as well. Everyone else had that off. I felt awkward having mine on. And then of course, uh, because appearance was uh, so significant, many students felt like they needed to elaborate. And there were some other rarer ones. Now, this, all of this study, all of this data led to these suggestions. And you could read about this in our published paper. Uh, if you go to tinyurl.com slash zoom camera paper, you can, or search my name, or you look at the uh, Whova uh, profile link, you'll see a link to the paper, which discusses this more in, in detail. But uh, in the interest of time, I want to very quickly uh, say what we did this semester. And, you know, we don't want to require cameras to be on. I would like to read this from a student. I would like to mention that no one should assume the living conditions of students when not on campus. Some students live in the worst conditions possible. And that right there sums it all up. It's really not good pedagogical practice to require cameras to be on. And so I want to show you one thing we tried this semester. I'm going to skip ahead. Um, we created a, a series of slides that would remind students at the beginning of every lab section, please turn on your cameras for the entire class if you're comfortable doing so. So being explicit and then also explaining why teachers can better pace if they can see your face came up with a little pithy rhyme. Many students report that having cameras on makes class more enjoyable. And these memes were created by our students for an exercise in previous classes to kind of joke, get their attention. We had a different meme every class. And so we would uh, illustrate, you know, if appearance is what you're concerned about, then perhaps plan ahead and not, maybe not take class from bed if you don't need to. Um, turning off your camera for no good reason, everyone will do it and pretty soon class will be lonely. So this is one slide per lab and it seems to be working. So just as a, a follow-up to show evidence that this works, and this slide is to show, you know, it's okay sometimes to have the, your camera off, especially if your family is fighting or other reasons. 
And then just to make a joke, I am once again asking you to turn on your camera. The students seem to like this and it does seem to be working. So in the subsequent semester, fall 2020 and in spring 2021, I asked them self-report, what percentage of the time do you think you have your cameras on during class? And that went up from 64% to 76% while, uh, in the, because of the semester of having this slide and also the instructors being aware of our suggested practices. And I'd just like to say also that the, the range went up from 36 to 84% by TA to 45 to 95%. And so we do have evidence and we're going to do some follow-up analysis because the semester is still going on, but it does seem to work to have this explicit and also having uh, active learning techniques and, and other ways in which we can encourage camera use to be on. We also ask students in follow-up, why did you put your camera on? And they will often cite reasons on this slide and also reinforce our previous findings like, well, everyone else had it on. Some people even said, well, it depended on exactly how many other students had their camera on, reinforcing all the suggestions. And so uh, even two more semesters under our belts, we stand by the results of that study and we encourage you to check it out. And so with that, I'll, uh, I'll uh, end.